Caitlin, hey, congratulations on your new film, Roadkill. Thank you so much. And tell me, how do I pronounce your first name? Because I don't want to mess up. It's Gig. gig? Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much, Gig. Hey, not a problem. Not a problem. Not a problem. So, hey, um, you know, it's it's a it's an exciting thriller uh, um, for, for yourself. So uh, tell us what initially drew you uh, to this film. Um, I was actually fortunate enough that the project kind of fell in my lap, so to speak. Uh, our amazing writer director, my fellow co-star Warren Fast passed the script along to my manager for my consideration. And I really loved the material. I have a guilty pleasure for stories that have unreliable narrators. And that from a fan point of view really drew me into the story. And I loved the mystery that First of all, there are numerous plot twists that just keep you guessing the entire time. But the dynamic between the hitchhiker and the driver and not really knowing who is the victim and who is the villain in this situation was really interesting. And there's a fun, empowering sort of twist in the driver's character that she is not as a damsel in distress as you think she might be. So in in, in your case, as an actress... When you play a character like the driver, do you see yourself as the villain or the or the victim? Ooh, that's a really interesting question. I think in a story that's driven by revenge, you have to not judge a book by its cover in a sort of sense. And understanding the motivations behind a so-called villain is very important. And obviously when I'm in the perspective of the driver she doesn't see herself as a villain or a predator in any sense and she is acting in self-defense the entire time and when we start to really unearth her backstory towards the end of the film it adds a lot of nuance to what you think might be a typical villain so how how easy was it and how fun was it to get into the mindset of the driver it was extremely fun I love doing my own stunts, and that's something that always helps me really connect to my character. So when I was getting to learn how to shoot a shotgun for the first time and doing some of my driving stunts, it helped me feel really connected to her and sort of empowered in the character. And I was actually able to work with a stunt coordinator who I had worked with on a previous series. As soon as I found out about this role, I was in LA and I called him and said, I have this role. She has to be very comfortable wielding a shotgun. There are lots of explosions, lots of stunts, but I need to make sure that I know how to comfortably handle a gun so that I can appear confident and wield it around very impulsively and confidently uh, first and foremost. So getting a, being able to have that training in Los Angeles, we went out to a ranch in Malibu and he taught me about the actual armory techniques that I should know before being on set and the proper way to handle a weapon like that so that I could just have that confidence when holding it and not feel an extreme kick and look like I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and that was really fun for me to be connected to the driver and getting comfortable with a weapon made me feel really empowered to be her I guess it's funny you you seem so comfortable uh wielding so many different weapons in in, in this film I was not at all before this I'd never held a shotgun before this film and I think Warren he knew that I was originally born in Georgia and he was like you know you probably shot a shotgun at some point just growing up in the country and I was like I grew up in LA we do not do that here no one's just going out on a shooting range that is not a thing in Southern California so um, I wanted to make sure that I had that comfortability with the weapon so that I could appear that she has a brash and abrasive sense of holding the weapon and I didn't want to look timid by any means. So what? Uh, tell tell us about the uh, driving training. Were, were there any driving training, or you just got driving tips? Just got driving tips. Had a fantastic driving stunt double. I am glad that I didn't uh, necessarily have to do all of my own driving scenes or you know car explosion scenes. But I had actually done some previous driving stunts. My very first time driving was in 2016. I was. I was 12. 
Wow. Yeah, 12 or 13 when I filmed Netflix's film Wheelman. My very first car that I drove was a Porsche 911 stick shift. It was in 1982. So a very cool car to say that was the very first thing I ever drove. So I had gotten comfortable on learning the verbiage of how to talk to a stunt coordinator regarding different driving stunts and learning about how things are cheated and molded around. But I was a bit more comfortable now that I actually have my driver's license. Well, then let's talk about your co-star, this uh, this Red Nova that you had to drive around. How <laughs> oh, awesome Back is she, right? Yeah. Sorry, say that one more time. No, or, or basically act inside. So uh, t- tell 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 us about uh, you know this this car that you spent so much time in. I I really can't think of any other word to describe it, but it's a it's a badass car. So when I saw that, I was like, this is awesome. I couldn't wait to get inside of it, and having that ambiance of the stunts in the car to really frame this world of the driver helped me feel so instantly in character. And I love how the juxtaposition of the Nova's tight, intimate environment combined with these big, expansive open roads of Bay County, Florida, it just somehow makes it feel even more claustrophobic, despite there being all of this space on the open back roads. There's really no one else around and it's a very eerie desolate environment so somehow it just makes everything happening inside the car feel even more suffocating and helps that intensity really build for us as actors i was gonna say you know those the the open roads out there seems kind of creepy but that's that's the uh, ambiance that uh, that was being trying to create for the film yes and we really filmed in these open roads of Bay County, Florida, and having that to build our 1980s setting was really great and having so much land to work with. Um, And our director, Warren, is actually from Panama City and the surrounding areas where we filmed. And it was so cool for him. We were actually talking about this yesterday, but he was saying how he drives these roads all the time and being able to transform them into the world of our movie was so special for him now the for a lot of the scenes filmed um for this movie were you in the moving car or was it a lot of times is stationary for uh, safety purposes a lot of times was stationary we actually set up in a studio with a fantastic green screen backdrop that allowed us to remain stationary but appear as though everything is moving outside which is a little movie magic hack that is done a lot on film but for those extremely wide shots where you actually see the car moving we incorporated a blend of those to really keep the contained essence of within the car combined with the action going on outside so then uh then what was your experience uh, with, um, what was it like, uh, you know, working with uh, Ryan, who's also in the car this entire time? I, I want to say, what was it like? Probably 70% of your scene, 70, 80% of your scenes is probably with him. Yes. And uh, Ryan is just an absolutely fantastic co-star. I can't rave about him enough. We, despite the intense, dark nature of the story, we had so much fun together. I think as a cast and crew, doing late night shoots you really get to bond very quickly because about midnight one o'clock everyone's delirious side comes out a little bit and it really just enforces this nature of bonding with each other um so ryan and i spent a lot of late nights turned early mornings filming our scenes in a car together and um he's a fantastic human being first and foremost but what he brought to the hitchhiker was really great yeah, I was going to say, you know, night, night shoots is extremely challenging, especially for your, you know, for your sli- sleeping <laughs> and awake clock for yourself. Yes, I was practically nocturnal this entire shoot. We would arrive at set as it was getting dark. A lot of the scenes that are filmed in the daytime was actually the morning after we had filmed a late night shoot. Um, our few scenes that occurred during the day, but we would arrive on set around maybe 5, 6 p.m. and go at least until 6, 7 o'clock the next morning. So I was practically nocturnal. would eat something that was like a late night or 
not late night, early morning Waffle House and then go to bed all day. <laughs> that, is, that is crazy. That is, that is ludicrous. But uh, um, a, a little bit more about the stunts. Um, you actually had physical stunts in this film, too. Um, did it? And and you did them all, right? Yes. In, including, in, I, I don't want to spoil it, but including like jumping and leaping in the air. Yes. Um, and I, let me tell you, it ended up being one of the coldest winters North Florida has ever seen. The I think the Panhandle froze over and somehow we were pretending like it was the dead heat of the dog days of summer in 1980. So that was an extreme contrast from what's happening on screen to in real life. So in those tiny short shorts and 20, 30 degree weather, it was very intense. But definitely the moving with all of the driver stunts helped keep me warm. And I really love doing that kind of action and physicality. Again, it makes me feel really connected to be in the moment of the scene like that. And it's just fun as well. Well, tell and and what about getting physical with uh, some of your uh, I want I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong. It's it's with, uh, you know, Trenton. I want to say Trenton and uh, was it William in yes. the, uh, going toe to toe with them. Did you did was was that uh, carefully choreographed? Did no one got hurt, of course, you know, <laughs> One is fight scenes like that are so meticulously choreographed. It's almost like a long dance. So you started off and we had a fantastic stunt team who had two. I'm such a visual person. So thank goodness it happened this way. But they would have two partners who would show us the choreography so we could watch it play out as though we were viewers of the movie. And then we would slowly step into those roles and take it piece by piece, just starting out, you know, hand here hand here until we got a comprehensive understanding of all of the movements. And then we'd start to add a little speed to it, a little emotion to it. And then we would start rehearsing it like that. But there's something about most of the takes I think that were used were our first takes because there's something about you've been rehearsing it so slowly, the movement is down. And then when you actually go for it, even though you're faking the roughness, but having that intensity on the first get-go it just always feels so intense and so real have you have you done something like that before I have I have worked on a couple of series that I've had in, in intensive stunt training um, I did the most hand-to-hand -hand combat in a series that I did called Dwight in Shining Armor but it was a totally different world this was a adventure comedy series and my character was a medieval princess from a thousand years ago so a lot more of physical comedy and grit with broadsword training but just straight hand-to-hand -hand combat going against men who are taller than me and twice my size there was some intensity and I it's like I need to be on my a-game to learn these moves and not uh, look like I'm only 5'4 on screen <laughs> <laughs> so you are indeed an, an actress with uh, dangerous skills going from hand to hand to uh, broadswords to uh, <laughs> to shooting guns. And I, I don't know how because I'm seriously so I've been so uncoordinated with sports my entire life. Never picked that up, but I've I've been able to do some stunt training. So that's my that'll be my claim to athletic fame. So, Caitlin, tell, tell us how you got started in this business. Why you why you love acting? I started in this business when I was three and a half. My mom and I actually went to Los Angeles on vacation uh, with my grandma. I had no intentions of getting into the entertainment industry. My family didn't even know what that was. And a man came up to us and said or asked my mom if I would be interested in talking and would I be interested in ever auditioning for movies. And my mom and grandma being from a small town in South Georgia, this was a once in a lifetime opportunity that would never happen again. So we couldn't pass up this chance. And I just talked and talked and talked and I was the most extroverted child. And my very first audition that we flew out to LA for, I ended up booking. And that just opened us to a whole new world. I, I truly don't know if that one encounter with that agent, if that had not happened, I have 
no clue who I would be today. It's the craziest thing to think about. And that man is Jeremy Apodi, who is still my commercial agent today. Funny enough, we have watched him grow his family, met his girlfriend, turned his wife. They're, they had beautiful children. So it's just been a crazy lifelong journey of friendship and really just being at the right place in the right time. But I don't believe in coincidences. But growing up my whole life, I always loved it. It was never something that my mom pressured me into. It was something that amongst other hobbies of trying to keep me as grounded and as a real kid as possible, I was allowed to just love it and see it as play and getting to meet new people and have new experiences. But there was never any pressure to succeed that I know a lot of child actors have fallen victim to. It was just something that I love to be on set. I love to meet new people, had so many amazing opportunities from a young age to travel and learn about new cultures and expanding a global perspective by working with people and telling stories from all around the world. It, it's been a fascinating childhood experience. Wow. I, I, I was going to say this, this is, this is like a twist of fate um, for you. And and, and and you and you sound like you you have your head on straight uh, this entire time. Thank you. My my mom really instilled the values in me. Of again, it's so important to be a real kid. So even though I wasn't very good, I played soccer growing up and had friends who were outside of the entertainment industry and just were normal kids. Went to real public school and had those experiences to keep me grounded and humble. Um, the importance of giving back was always instilled in me and especially giving back to the Los Angeles community that I was in. And the value of my education as well is something that I hold really close to my heart. And my mom encouraged me to really prioritize my education throughout high school. I just finished my degree at UCLA and I'm so happy that I decided to really value my academics so much and pursue a collegiate degree because it's just again really expanded my worldview and allowed me to make so many friends from different walks of life and not keeping me enclosed in a child actor bubble when this was all I knew but instead something that I continuously chose if if you don't mind uh can may I ask you what degree you actually graduated with from UCLA yeah, I have two double majors, American literature and culture and sociology, and I minored in film. So I just finished up my classes, but I walk in graduation until June. So I have a few months of excitement leading up to that, but I'm looking forward to it. Oh, well, the congrats, congratulations uh, with that. Yeah. And so, uh, so, but, but you, but you look at this as a start of a acting career. You're not like, going to uh, in a different direction uh, anytime soon no not anytime soon I, this has been my passion from such a young age and I'm so grateful to have found my thing so early but definitely by as I'm making a transition into more of an adult career I'm excited to explore working behind the camera as well and starting to think about producing and creating my own content and having a multi-dimensional impact on the industry are there uh, certain dreams of what kind of projects that uh, you like to work on or certain people that you like to work with? Mm. It's a great question. I love, again, my primary major was American literature and culture. So I'm an avid reader. I love book to movie adaptations. It's always been something that I love to watch growing up. And I am a huge fan of how Reese Witherspoon's company, Hello Sunshine, finds such great source material and adapts them so beautifully on screen. I think as a reader, I would love to follow in those footsteps in a sense. And really just telling empowering female stories is something I've always been drawn to. Well, it's excellent. I mean, you 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 have you have uh, plenty of time to both read and um, you know, find productions to uh to join with yourself. So yeah. So uh, let's uh let's uh I've taken a lot of your time already. So let's uh you know, talk about uh, after Roadkill, you have upcoming projects for yourself. Yes, I have another film that's coming out early next year. It's called Skill House. I need to check our uh, cast and crew group chat. I don't think we have a release date quite yet, but I've been hearing rumors of a spring release. It's an extremely gory, brutal horror film uh, with 50 Cent 
and Leah Pipes and Bryce Hall and Neil McDonough. It's a fantastic cast. And whereas Roadkill is about these expansive chases on the open roads, this film happens all in one location. It's uh, by the a director who's worked on multiple Saw movies. So that sense of claustrophobia of all being trapped in a fishbowl environment uh, with a bunch of social media influencers who wake up, they're kidnapped, they're confined in a house together, and if anyone leaves, they're killed. So kind of drawing from that Saw influence, and it's a very timely film as well. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds definitely bloodier than this one. It is insane like i have never seen that much gore and blood and guts on on a set before it's one of the few horror films that i've worked on or i don't know if i've ever worked on one to this extent but i don't think we're doing barely any visual effects it was all practical effects that were done on set and i think that just heightens performances of actors actually watching people's heads exploding and all of these insane practical effects happen right in front of you. I think the reactions you get from actors being able to really witness that and not have to imagine what it looks like through a computer generated image is it, it it's the next level terrifying. We had a camera operator who actually passed out in the middle of the scene from the amount of blood he saw in the camera camera fell the lens shattered it, and we were like we know we're doing something right if a horror cinematographer is freaked out by this 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 sounds like a lot of great new experiences for you both road to kill and your next your next film i mean this this is actually amazing for yourself thank you thank you well caitlin we really appreciate you uh speaking to us about roadkill it's it's been a pleasure i mean this is a I, I do have to admit, this this film really kept me guessing. I was going, wow, there's a twist. And then, then there's another twist <laughs> throughout the entire film. So really appreciate you uh, speaking to us about this film. Well, thank you so much for having me, Gig. This has been wonderful. Hey, it's wonderful. And hopefully we get to do this again, possibly on your next film. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Happy, Happy New Year. Year.